You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's go. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Thursday, 28th day of June. 2018. Happy Thursday! So glad you joined us. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, a special welcome to you. We are glad to have you with us. Thanks for being here. I have up on the screen a chart of the S&P 500 E-mini futures. If you cannot see the chart, just go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side of the page, there's a big microphone. Click it, follow the instructions, you'll be registered all the way through, uh, I believe it's tomorrow, uh, end of the month, and then on the first day of the month, you'll register again, but this time, it will be good for the entire month of July. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds for 30 days. You only have to register once per month. That gives you one-click access to the show each and every day. Also, we have a dual stream, a redundant stream, happening right now at youtube.com slash CFRN slash live. The S&P 500 E-mini futures chart looks a little 
naked at the moment. Uh, it is. My tab came undocked the other day. And once upon a time, someone taught me how to redock a tab when it ends up like this. And uh, <clears throat> I couldn't remember, so I just started afresh. As you're dragging your chart around, be careful. If you, if you click and pull on one of these tabs, if you right-click it, you see it. You got your close, you got your undock, you move to the left, you move to the right, even your rename. But you notice there's no redock. And I just for the life of me couldn't remember how it was one of the partners taught me how to redock. So anyway, it's time to clean it up and start over. I still got the other one lurking around here somewhere. Yep. Right there. Uh, that was our live radio trade yesterday, uh, which worked out well. Just from 22 down to, uh, what was it, uh, 14. Eight-point trade materialized right in front of our eyes, live, in real time. Always nice uh, when that happens. Okay. Well, let's see what's going on in the big wide world out there today's thursday which means thursday night is the weekly partner workshop partners please email your questions ahead of time if you can with charts and all that good stuff <clears throat> we like to go over the questions that are emailed in first then we take questions live until there are no more questions once there are no more questions we close up for the night this means it could be two hours or it could be 20 minutes. It's all depending upon the partners who are there and the questions that they have to ask, okay? And if you've been on the trial and you wanna be in that partner workshop because you've got some questions, get a hold of Michael this afternoon and he'll get you all squared away. We got big wigs talking about Bitcoin versus blockchain. A few well-known people who don't routinely speak about Bitcoin and blockchain technology recently shared their opinions on the subjects. Jack Ma, the Chinese billionaire behind Alibaba Group, he opined that blockchain technology could change our world more than people imagine. Bitcoin, however, could be a bubble. And I've said that since day one. When the dust settles, we don't know who will be the survivor? I think there will be more than one survivor, but we don't know who they will actually be. Blockchain, on the other hand, which powers the Bitcoin and powers it all, <clears throat> that's never going to go away. Okay? Uh, just as you can't unring a bell once you discover blockchain, you, 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 can't, you, you can't put that back in the tube, now can you? So, Bitcoin, uh, he says, he added Jack Ma, remember Jack, he and a couple friends in an apartment in China cooked up this scheme <clears throat> called Alibaba, and they had, what do they have between them? I think it was 800 bucks, yeah, something like that, and uh, <clears throat> it was born right there, the whole idea, the concept, everything, uh, I don't even know if they had a cocktail napkin, uh, they might have had to write it on the palm of their hand. American dream alive and well in China. Jack adds that traditional financial institutions serve 20% of people and make 80% of profits. Boy, that 2080 rule has followed me everywhere I've gone my entire life, and it's followed you too, even if you uh, didn't bother to notice. 2080 rule. You know what it is. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. In your home, at your office, in your church, in your homeowners association group, uh, in your government. It's, it's, it's knitted into the fabric of the universe somehow. New financial institutions should service 80% of the people, according to Jack Ma, and make 20% of the profit. 
Hmm. Steve Wozniak, the Bitcoin loving co-founder of Apple, the, the one person who could actually put up with Steve Jobs day in and day out, <clears throat> has on the other hand said he feels that all the current hype around blockchain is just a bubble akin to the dot-com bubble. Well, let's back up and look at that, Steve, real close. Was there a dot-com bubble? Mm-hmm. Did it melt down? Mm-hmm. And have venture capitalists raised more money this year alone for tech than they raised in the whole dot-com era put together? Uh, the answer is yes. And it's only June. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Uh, Steve goes on to say, if you look at all that internet stuff that happened, we got it, it just took a while. It doesn't change in a day. A lot of the blockchain ideas that are really good by coming out early, they can burn themselves out by not being prepared to be stable in the long run. Thank you, Steve. Professor Robert Schiller, who received the 2013 Nobel Prize in Economics, thinks that Bitcoin is a generational social movement that might be in a speculative price bubble, but it does not mean it's going away anytime soon. He said in an interview uh, that the East Coast is less into it than the West Coast. Oh, Biggie Smalls and Tupac. Silicon Valley is really into it. It's a social movement. It's an epidemic of enthusiasm. It's a speculative bubble, but that doesn't mean it's going to zero. So there you have the opinion of Jack Ma, Steve Wozniak, and Robert Schiller. I think they should like, form a band or something. Uh, after coming under a lot of criticism lately over centralization, freezing accounts, and other issues, EOS might soon get a serious makeover. Daniel Larimer, the creator of EOS, has proposed a major revision to the way its constitution works. He explains that this is because he just now learned that if you give people arbitrary power, to resolve arbitrary disputes, then everything becomes a dispute and the decisions made are arbitrary. Okay, <clears throat> the more power the arbiter has, the more vicious and petty the disputes become and the less predictable the outcome. Better late than never. Okay, now we're gonna talk about something that we rarely talk about here on the CFRN. I don't know if we've ever directly addressed this on the CFRN, but we're going to talk about it for a moment today on the CFRN. And I'm going to, I'm talking about it not so much because it falls in line with today's news. I'm going to talk to you about it because of the insidious evil that it is. <clears throat> it's a four letter word. If there's any little ones uh, in the room, you might send them shuffling right now or cover their little ears, or depending upon their age, you might tell them to listen up because this is really important. The four-letter word I speak of is porn. Yes, porn, as in porno, as in pornography, as in um, one of the darkest things man has to choose from. You know, I was talking with someone about this the other day. If you also are a man of a certain age, <clears throat> when you were a boy, you could only get your hands on one of those kinds of magazines, because that's all there was back then, by either shoplifting it or having enough gumption to walk up to the storekeeper and say, no, I'd like uh, this month's copy of uh, Playboy. Uh, and when he looked at you funny, through those little glasses when he kind of squinted at you. For my dad, he's homesick. Mm, you might got it, you might not. 
more than likely you had one dog-eared issue, maybe several years old, uh, up under your mattress. That was it. As a young man growing up, as a teenager, an adolescent, all these hormones, you had one dog-eared playboy under your mattress. Did it ruin you? Probably not. But today, we live in a, such a different world. If your child, your grandchild, any child has a cell phone, a smartphone, a connection to the internet, they are, well, let's see, one, three, four, dot, C, O. They are seven keystrokes or thumb strokes with the smartphone. They are seven thumb strokes away from some of the most horrific images. And these aren't just still pictures in a magazine. Oh no, we're talking full blown movies with the sound effects. And I mean, I'm not saying sex is bad. That's a three letter word. No, God created that. The stuff that is five seconds away from your 13 year old adolescent son or daughter, you know, I, I don't think God cooked that up. Mm -mm. No, the enemy had a hand in that. So enough of that. You know what I'm talking about. And if you don't recognize the danger, oh, my son would never look at something like that. I hope you're right. I pray to God you're right. Because once they see it, they can't unsee it. And it begins to affect who they are, who they marry, how they live out their life, I think it's probably more potent than most drugs. I really do. Adult Entertainment Video Portal Pornhub has announced it will accept two new cryptocurrencies, Tron and Zen Cash. As you may recall, a couple of months ago, uh, The Verge made a big deal about the site accepting its token. They didn't want their token there. There is no explanation on the way Pornhub selected the few tokens it did, but at least in the case of Verge, it is reported it just got paid $75 million XVG for doing so. Now, the folks over at Pornhub, of course, you know, want to defend their actions. Here at Pornhub, as one of the most viewed websites in the world, with over, hold on to your hat, 90 million daily visitors. 90 million. I don't know what percentage that is of the pop world population. Uh, it's important that we continue to expand our crypto payment options to align with our community's growing payment preferences. Decentralized payment systems have continued to grow in popularity and cryptocurrency adoption is exploding across a broad economic spectrum. Today, cryptocurrencies are especially viable in the adult entertainment industry because they are privacy-centric and incorporate more anonymity tools than traditional tender. That's from Corey Price, who is the vice president at Pornhub. And that's that story, but I'm telling you, if your son, your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter have pressured and pressured and pressured you for a smartphone, just, you know, not, not only, not only is porn a couple of uh, thumb clicks away, uh, so is ISIS, uh, so is the dark web. Uh, it, I, I'm sure you're aware that on the dark web, you can buy and sell every kind of drug imaginable and UPS will deliver it right to your door. You can order fentanyl from China. UPS delivers it right to you. I would only say that because I believe that I'm talking to a body of adult believers here who have no interest in ordering fentanyl from China. Otherwise, I wouldn't even bring it up. And, and be careful who you bring it up in front of. You know, I'll just go spouting that out at some family gathering because somebody over in the corner 
has got the shakes because they can't get the fix. China, fentanyl, UPS. I mean, it can be here in two days. So, yeah, you might want to keep that to yourself. In an interview released in China yesterday, Jian Zhang, the founder of F-Coin, faced challenging questions regarding his business and controversial business model of trans-fee mining. As previously reported, the practice of rewarding users with exchange-issued tokens for generating transactions was called an overpriced backdoor ICO ripe for manipulation by critics, including Binance CEO Chang Pin Zhao. Zhang said, with respect to the accusations of pyramid selling, currency manipulation, and being a stock maker, I won't be answering these questions directly. You can refer to the notion and history of Bitcoin and see how many people have been wronged this way. Are there still people who think pyramid, that's easy for you to say, Bitcoin is pyramid selling? If so, you are not rejecting Fcoin. You are actually denying the economic value of the cryptocurrency in general. The accusation of an expensive ICO is the most funny and ridiculous. First of all, Binance grew from an ICO. Some people must be out of their mind when criticizing the ICO of others while raising no money by themselves. Second of all, it's wrong in the first place for some people to calculate our market value using the total amount of Fcoin token yet to be issued by us. Those unissued FT or Fcoin tokens cannot be regarded as transaction, nor can they be a part of any distribution or dividend. They actually don't exist until they are issued. Therefore, the miscalculation is just wrong. In no cryptocurrency exchange is market value calculated this way. Lastly, our valuation is actually very low given our transaction amount, the dividend ratio, number of active traders, and growth rate. So, just like a stock, if a stock has a billion shares, if only half a billion are issued and in circulation, uh, it's called the public float, that's how you derive your market cap. You multiply the price times a half a billion, not a billion. Okay? If you are a GDAX user, this is a kindly reminder that the platform will be switching over to Coinbase Pro tomorrow. That's Friday, June the 29th, and you will not be able to access the old domain anymore. So friends, if you have anything at GDAX, you gotta pack it up and move it, I guess. According to the developers, the redesigned platform is meant to make the trading experience easier and more intuitive with a simplified deposit and withdrawal process, improved charts that will allow customers to easily scroll and access historical data, and a new consolidated portfolio view called My Wallets. This lets customers see an overview of their account orders and balances. Now, GDAX is a big deal. Let's take a look at the numbers around the world and see how it fares. These are the cash markets starting in the U.S. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is currently down 22 points. NASDAQ is positive by 4. S&P 500 is flat and the Russell 2000 is down 4. Looks like a day of consolidation to me so far. In the commodity basket, crude oil added 73 cents, which is 1%. And it's trading 73.49 last. Gold has lost yet another $4.40, trading 12.51.70. In the Asian markets, at the close, the Nikkei was down a point and a half. Shanghai was down 27, which for the Shanghai, that's almost 1%. And the Hang Seng added 141 points, exactly half of 1%. Now, 
Europe yesterday had a big green day while the rest of the world struggled. Uh, the European markets got a little bit of that medicine today. Not too terribly bad. FTSE ended up down 6. The DAX was down 171. And the CAC lost 51 points, which is almost 1%. So there you have it, a mixed day in Asia, red day in Europe, and a mixed day here at home in the U.S. of A. So a spot of news, some numbers, and now what you've all been waiting for, the recap. Mr. Michael B. All right, here I am. You really think they've all been waiting for my recap? Yes, they've been slow dancing and swaying to the music, waiting for... Way you. to the music, slow you. dancing. You, you know, Me it's one thing. Girl. It's one thing to get an earwig when you hear <laughs> a song, right? All right. But, but how do you get them when you didn't hear the song? How does that happen? I, you know, it's just in your head. It's just in your head. Like this little guy right here. This little guy. Right here. Oh, away. I don't have the charts. Hang on. Take I don't it. have the charts. Take it away, Should Mikey. I... <laughs> This little guy, right here. Okay, for some reason. Just get in your head. I still don't see the little guy. You still don't see him? Wait, well, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, there he is. You're on my monitor screen. I think I know what's wrong. Yeah, there we go. I got it. Okay. I this little guy. It. Just get in your head. Slow dancing. Sway into the music. Yep. Slow dancing. Just me and my girl. Hey, did you see the one I sent you, uh... I didn't. I didn't publicly publish it, but I, I just the one I made for Bert. Did you see that one? Um, no, oh, not sure. Oh, dude, I go, was go to, go to going Twitter. Through a whole bunch of emails. Grab an open tab and go to twitter.com/cfrn. You okay? You were doing what with emails? Twitter.com/cfrn space. Enter. <clears throat> Okay, now, folks, <clears throat> if you, where's that follow button? Because people are, how do I do that Twitter thing? Oh, right there. Follow right, right over here. That's it, right, follow, there, right there. Now, you do have to have your own follow. account, which means you have to have an email address. That's all. No credit card required. Okay, keep scrolling, baby. Okay. Down, doobie, doo, down, down. Uber CEO no. wants a refugee himself. is taking extraordinary action. Yeah. Nah. You got some comments in there. Oh yeah, going on. Um, that's Frank Lee. That's that's, that's Frank Lee. I thought that's, that was you. That's Frank Lee. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's no ponytail. There's no ponytail. Right. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> now if you click on that little fella, that this guy right here. Uh huh. Yeah, if you click him, he should okay. swing into action. Uh. Here he comes. But. Do I have to click uh, this too? Well. I thought I put some ladies up there. Keep scrolling. I, I put some ladies up there. All right. Well, I'll kill that guy. Yeah, kill him. And keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Oh well, this is awkward. I just got to say, it's very awkward. Maybe you. Uh oh. It looks like it's just repeating, doesn't it? You know, there's something happened with the Evany Daily Futures. What you might call it that oh, wait, that's that new. that picture repeats over and over i gotta go yeah. in there and what's going on with and, that guy i just it makes me nauseous to see that because i worked so hard to create a beautiful newspaper and it got messed up over nine dollars or something i don't know um, you know that guy's in there a lot all the stuff that i posted last night i mean all the stuff you posted is still there june 27th it's all still there. It's just over and over again. It looks like. Right. I don't know. I Some, don't know what something the something went. very bizarre has taken place, Michael. And uh, I'm, I'm we not... have two thousand six hundred and fifty nine followers. Yes. Okay. Do this. Go emini.cfrn.net because I found one of the ladies. E I wonder if if like. Twitter has like some policy. I because it's twelve thirty four. They never mentioned it to me. Okay, slide down. Slide, slide down. 
what that. Oh, see there, right uh, there. There's the NQ. Oh, we just passed her. Oh, yeah. there it is, right there. Okay. Well, well yeah, but there's there was actually a few of them. Uh, click her. Click that lady. Click her. Click that Claire. lady. Yeah, I mean she doesn't do anything. But just stand there and talk, but. I'm hitting that. <laughs> Fire. Just playing. Just playing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the guy. Okay. The guy. There she is. Oh, there is the lady. She's okay, a little no, late to the party. Oh my goodness. She is. Yeah. All right. I've never heard the lady. Go ahead. Have a listen. Uh oh. Hang on. Okay. The, the audience can't hear, but you can. The audience can't hear. Hi, I'm Clarice. I that's, think that's Clarice. Clarice. Yeah. And then the other lady comes in and starts, like, slamming Clarice because she's always off on a break or something. I don't know. But she actually gives you the, uh, she gives you the tweet. Okay. She says to buy, she says buy the NQ at, uh, I forget. And then the little redheaded lady <clears throat> says buy the S&P <clears throat> at, uh, well, you'd have to listen. And then there's one with Santa. <clears throat> you are having fun with this. They were, there's, yep. There's, <laughs> Dwayne has a night off. Clarice will help you. Prid quo pro. Latin for creepy. <clears throat> remember, remember that? Prid yeah. quo pro Clarice. What was that? <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Who, yeah. I mean, who makes, who makes those movies and why? Uh, that was a creepy movie. That was. Was that that Quentin Tarantino? Was he? Was that? Was he up to no good? On that movie? I think so. I think so. I mean, it was like flesh eating and all that stuff. It was nasty. Cannibalism. Yeah. You know. It was. <clears throat> I would rather eat at Chipotle than do that. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> that is a nasty food. I would not eat. I would just a, not eat. That is a nasty food eat. on the face of the earth. My God, give me Taco Bell ten times over. But you have yeah, to I won't, I won't do that either. I would just not eat. You have to drag me <laughs> kicking and screaming into a stinking Chipotle. Uh, it's overpriced. It's bland. Oh, 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 this, <clears throat> what's this uh, sandwich shop? Uh, Jimmy John's, you ever been there? Uh-uh. You never been to a Jimmy John's? Uh-uh. <clears throat> they don't have salt and pepper. Well, they don't have them here. And they don't have them up north either. Now, now my wife's on a... On a on a strict diet and she's she, because she wants to be <clears throat> not because she's overweight she just knows that if she doesn't eat properly with the low carbs and whatnot she doesn't feel good and and it will eventually add weight <clears throat> and so what she can eat and is able to eat like she has her sandwich with no bun you know or, or no bread uh -huh. but she does like her salt she does like her pepper you know and so yeah i like pepper she's just i don't like salt honey, would, you, would you go up and, and get me a little salt and pepper and i'm like yeah i, I I, I would love to. <clears throat> and so I come back and I go, honey, this is a little bit disturbing, but they don't have any. And <laughs> it may be the first time I ever heard her say the BS word, but she did. No way. Kicked her chair she said it over. Right out loud? Right out loud? Kicked her chair over, getting up, <clears throat> goes to the counter. I want some salt and pepper. And the guy wipes his hand on his little apron there <clears throat> and he goes ma'am jimmy Don jimmy johns <clears throat> prepares the food in such a way that there's no need for salt and pepper she said well, i'm not going to repeat what she said but the bottom line <clears throat> is that place really did not have any salt and pepper not in back That's not me. under the counter to me, to me, the bottom line is she said two bad words yeah. within like minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what the bottom line is and for everybody that's listening she is four foot eleven. She is. And full of fire. <clears throat> Got rid full of fire. <clears throat> full of fire. She is a ginger. Of, of four Irish, foot eleven. Full of fire. Of Irish and Latino descent. <clears throat> That's like uh, I don't know, fire and gasoline or something. So we've decided that on our next summer vacation, if we ever have one, have one? <clears throat> we're gonna become <laughs> yeah, have one. we're gonna become modern day Johnny Apple seeds, <clears throat> but we're gonna go to every every jimmy john's in the country and, and ask for salt and pepper. secretly stash <laughs> salt and pepper in a oh, hidden place stash. we're going to stash little salt and pepper packets in a hidden place in that restaurant then when we get back home after the vacation we're going to hit the message boards and we're going to let everybody know where it's hidden so they can go and enjoy a jimmy john's with salt and pepper 
So <coughs> it's uh, <coughs> we didn't. I think we were so mad we didn't even go to the movie. This was this was pre-movie uh, snacking <coughs> dinner, <coughs> and uh, yeah, we were just so torn up. I think we went home. I don't know. Well, I get it. I put the app tubby on my TV last night. Where I had messed up. I, you don't load it to your cable. You don't load it to your TV. You load it to your Fire Stick. That's that's how you do it. You put the app on the Fire Stick, and my goodness, if you if that's all you had, <clears throat> you would never run out of stuff to watch. That's good. And all right. you can get an uh, antenna from that late night TV guy. Michael, you're not going to believe this. <clears throat> For twenty bucks, there's a device. <clears throat> excuse me, that snatches HD programming <clears throat> right out of the air. No more expensive really? cable bills. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's called an antenna. A <laughs> <laughs> really, an antenna like yeah, those and, big and, things and, you used to have on your house. Except it's small, and you stick it on the wall, and it picks <clears throat> your local channels, your three or six or twelve, whatever you got where you live. They broadcast through the airwaves in HD. So no way. The infomercial guy, he doesn't ever really, you know. <clears throat> HD? Make... Through the airwaves? Yes, sir. <clears throat> 20 bucks. You should stay up late tonight and order one. <clears throat> or go to Walgreens. Well, <clears throat> I will be going to Walmart later today. You can At get least one there. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. I have to return <clears throat> something. Hey, they got anyway. a thing. They got a thing at, at, at uh, Walmart now. If you need to return something, I don't return stuff. I just throw it away. But my wife, she'll stand in line for hours to return something because she's she's purposeful like that. And uh, you can call ahead to Walmart and say, "I need to return these jeans." Uh, the label said skinny jeans, and I put them on, and <laughs> I don't look skinny, so I want to bring <laughs> them back. <clears throat> it's like making a reservation. So you get there, there's 500 people in line at the return desk, and you just scoot right to the front of the line. Oh, I have a reservation at two. Oh, how may I help you? And they take back those skinny jeans like that. Well, I, they're good about they're good about taking back. As long as it's within like two weeks, they're good about taking back. Well, right, because they have a filter. It's called the 500 people in line. So <laughs> it's a filter. And <clears throat> I don't know, down, down here, where I am now, it doesn't seem that bad. You know, when I was up north, it, you know, yeah. And well, everybody's live, complaining. Where you Walmart's like Saks Fifth Avenue. Well, I, I don't know about that, but, but it's... Oh, my God. They don't have a line. They don't have a line. I'll say that. All right. How far are you from the ocean? Um, If you go straight west, probably three hours. Hmm. But, you know, Myrtle Beach is probably three four hours away uh but you know the good beach is not, not that myrtle's not a good beach i you know i love myrtle. that was the beach of my but, childhood well not that not that myrtle's not a good beach yeah <clears throat> but if you go you know to beaches that are less populated that right. are still beautiful beaches mm -hmm. um you know then you're talking four or five hours you know but you might be in south carolina then and you might be in you know north north carolina on an island or something like that Hey, you uh, most. Let me ask my friend the internet this real quick before you go. Uh, okay, because I because I, I haven't even done my recap yet. Affordable I, beachfront I property. Ah, doggone. Yeah. Most affordable Atlantic Atlantic property. Isle, I think, is where we were. Here's a, a summary from ago. CBS Emerald News. Isle, Delray Atlantic Beach, Isle, Florida. Florida. Corpus Christi, yes. Texas. Deerfield and Beach, Florida. Atlantic Isle, there was this huge house, six bedroom house with a thing that went right out to the beach, $650,000. Bam. There's some beach, Michael, right there by you. It's either in North Carolina or in South Carolina. There was an article the other day. Oh, maybe this is it right here? No. Well, Pensacola, uh, the median home That's sales horror. price is 105. But no, this was in South Carolina or North Carolina. And I wanted to tell you about it. No, nope, not mobile. I was kind of blown away that it was uh, so affordable. Yeah, it's not in this article. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll probably never find the article and never tell you about it, but just know that somewhere around there, 
I mean, it may uh, be built on one of those super dumps or something. We just we just bought the house we're living in, so we're good right now. Mm. I mean, we've been living here for a month. How do you roughly. like it? You like it? Oh, it's it's beautiful. No, oh, it's beautiful. It's mm. a quiet neighborhood. Have you heard sirens? I I haven't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like before, when we were living next to the uh, next to the fire station. Um, but I got to do this quick because I have to go. Actually, I have to go back to the warehouse because okay. I have to meet somebody there who's buying right. something. Um, right. Okay, buddy. But so let me do. Let do me do thing. my recap. I'll hit mute. Bye. Okay. Here we go. Love you, Dwayne. All right. Today is the twenty eighth day of June, and today we made three ticks in the euro, seven ticks in crude, and ten ticks in the ES. That came up to two thirteen seventy five total. Um, today it took 20 minutes and two trades to get to our goal for the day, and we took a total of 11 trade opportunities. So on the month now, we're at 23.76. That's over 17 days, averaging 139 a day. On the year now, we're at 19,276, 19, over 117 days, averaging 164 a day. Okay, now what you need to pay attention to here is the average. Okay, the average per day is important. All right, that's what you want to get. You want to be consistent and have a positive average every single day, okay? All right, so now we're gonna get into the trades. So I'm just gonna go through, cause Dwayne and I were talking and I really do have to go to meet this person. Um, you know, normally I can hang out, but today I really do have to go and meet this person. Um, today we started on the ES right here. No, we started out over here. We had plus four right there. Then we stopped out there. That was minus eight. So we're at minus four. We're break even there, break even there, break even there. Then right here, we got six. So we're at plus two. And then right here, we got plus, um, plus eight. So we're at plus 10 at that point. We missed this short trade here. And during the break, there was some activity here. Um, Slingshot's not letting us trade, though. Over here, we had a short opportunity for that big drop down. And that was it. And look at 2700 is looming right below us. I think that's going to be a good bounce point, okay, for the rest of the week. Um, on crude oil, let's see. On crude, on crude, we only had two trade opportunities. On crude, the first one right here, we picked up five ticks. And I believe that's where we got our goal for the day. And over here, we got two more ticks. Um, we missed a we missed a long right there. And oops, hang on, missed a long there, missed a short right there. But that was at eleven o'clock. I don't know why I missed that. Missed another long there. So there was a lot missed right here and there, left on the table a lot. Um, during the break, shorting opportunity there, long there, long there. And a short there. Yep, a short there. And maybe another one right there. No, that wasn't one. Okay, so there was a lot left on the table on crude. And the euro. Okay, and today, normally I go through every market individually, but wow, look at this in the pre market today on the euro. Now, you might be asking, um, how could you have traded that using our trade setups? Well, you may have needed this. Okay, it's an inverted 137. Excuse me, to capture that big move down. Hang on. Capture that big move down. And once the markets opened up, we had a long opportunity right here. We took three ticks on that. It got really choppy and didn't give us anything. Okay, uh, during the break, there was a short there and a possible long there. And that was it. And that was it. And that, my friends, was the morning for us. Um, <laughs> Dwayne, are you still there? I'm right here, man. Okay. Well, with that, I will pass it back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, 
America's largest city park. Okay. Uh, recap of the recap. The recap of the recap was it took 20 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. 20 minutes, two trades. What'd you do different? I did nothing different. I never do anything different. It's always the same darn thing. That was a trick question, folks. <laughs> and he got it right. So it's... I found I found the place I was looking for that I wanted to show you and tell you about, which blow, kind of blows my mind. Is that beautiful or what? It is beautiful. Okay. Median listing price in St. Mary's, Georgia. And this article just came out a few days ago. Oh, it's in Georgia. Okay. Small town appeal makes a southern city a sure thing for those looking for a more relaxed way of life. Stay close and hang out at locally owned restaurants, boutiques, and museums that showcase St. Mary's spirit and soul. If you get the itch to explore, hop on the ferry to neighboring Cumberland Island or head to Jacksonville, Florida, which is a quick 45-minute uh, drive. See, you know, <clears throat> I grew up in Georgia. I never heard of St. Mary's, Georgia, to be honest. Yeah. Looks pretty. On the beach, 109,000 bucks. That uh, looks like a good deal. Hey, John is in the room. Okay, I you can. Uh, so I wanted to see what the downtown looks like. Uh, so, but yeah, if you got to run, uh, I do. I, I have to be at another location in okay. ten minutes. Uh, well, that's two undisclosed locations in one day. <laughs> you are a Renaissance man. Look at that. They got the little pavilion. That is pretty. I bet they have oh, that is cream. pretty. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that is pictures. pretty. I bet it's a super dump. I think that's what's going on. The I don't know that's what's the going only on. way they could do it. Uh, visitors, departments, government. How do I move there? Huh. Okay. okay. All right. Go I'm gonna, Bye. I'm, See ya. I'm going to open up his mic. Okay. And, and I'll right. talk to you later. Hey, we got a right. thing tonight. Partners meeting. Partners meeting tonight, guys. 9 p.m. Oh, 9 hey, that guy that was I was supposed to get together with yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I yeah, him I gave him. Number. I actually gave him your phone number today. Again? Okay, Ron. Yeah, okay. because your number was off from yesterday. It was one digit off. He said. Oh, I hate it when I do that. I'm sorry. I so. apologize. <clears throat> Ron, give me a call after the show. All right, take care, dude. Okay. Bye. We'll see. You. I think he's in. Uh, he might be in. Here. Yeah, Ron. I love to talk to you. Just let me know what I, how I can help. <clears throat> okay. John, okay. welcome to the show. Hang on, I gotta open him up. There he goes. Oh, John, right. welcome to the show. How are you today? Good to have you with us. Hope everything's going well. Did you have a nice evening? Okay. I can't hear a word you're saying, brother. Nary a word, John. John. Oh, let's see if Michael really opened his mic. Sometimes he fools around like that. <clears throat> no. Yep, bigger than life. There he is. John, hey, your mic's open, John, so I'm not sure. Maybe you're muted on your end or something. I'll go ahead and talk for a moment while you uh, check it out. Uphold. Anybody familiar with Uphold? <clears throat> Get unfamiliar with them real quick. Uh, I've got a beef with these guys. <clears throat> I sent them $500. They charged me a dollar a month to keep my $500. <clears throat> and the other day I decided, you know what? I just want my $500 back. And when I went to transfer to my bank, it said, this is going to take five to seven days. Well, wait a minute. When I gave you my money, it took like 30 seconds. Why does it take me five to seven days to get it back? Now, one thing about Uphold is you can transfer between currencies and <clears throat> uh, a few different cryptos, but they, but it's, but they hang on to it, right? It's under their purvey, purview. If you want to actually get it back into your physical, in your pocket wallet, <coughs> oh, there you are. Hey, John, welcome to Hi. the show. Hi, how are you? <coughs> Good, yourself? Not too bad. Uh, we just called a rally from these lows a minute ago, a few minutes ago, and it seems to be starting to gain traction. Um, and uh, I think we're going to, we're probably going to head higher, quite a lot higher before the day's out, actually. Okay. Uh, what, it's been a, strug it's what's been a struggle number? to get going, but um, it's starting to, starting to look better. What number for you <clears throat> really opens the door for a move higher? I think we're already there. I think it's I'm okay. starting, you know, uh, look, I did caveat it because if we break down from here, then it's curtains, you know, 
uh, if we if we sort of break down below the twenty two seven zero two there on the S and P two seven zero three, well that, that would be uh, that would not be good. But uh, Nasdaq's acting better than the S and P today, which is you know usually a good sign. But the problem is the Russell's very heavy, and so is the mid cap, although it's getting a little bit better. So uh, that's the problem. Um, uh, the uh, look the. For what it's worth, the, the platinum might actually be bottoming right here, right now. It got, the metals are pretty close to, to bottoming, if you. Um, the dollar uh, spiked a bit this morning, kind of ran into resistance, and is starting to come off a bit. And if we get a breakdown in the dollar in the next few days, I think the is, I think the lows are in on the metals. So we're not quite there yet, but, uh, but I'm starting to see some signs of. Uh, of uh, lighted, you know, but uh, look, one, one thing I have to tell, even though they don't, you know, we haven't, this is a lot like 2009, you're kind of, you know, we're not down that much really, and something could happen, you know, a negative report or something like that could come out, and you could have a 20 or $30 rally in gold, and all of a sudden, you know, you're back to 1280. Uh, don't, I'm not a buyer, uh, well, I actually did buy, uh, I did I put some buy stops under silver earlier this morning, and um, and uh, gold has a buy stop just above it to catch any kind of an upside. Uh, and I think the, the palladium is potentially in a bottoming zone right here too. So um, it might stretch into next week. It could be another tough week for the metals, but uh, I think beyond uh, beyond mid July, the metals could could be uh, pretty pretty perky. Pretty the strong. S the S and P is still below our lowest weekly zone. The NQ is still below our lowest weekly zone. Now, is it yeah, possible, it's bad. I mean, is it's it possible that I we mean, can close tomorrow below it. Yeah, it's happened a few times over the last nine years, but the the highest probability, based on historical observance, is that yeah. either later today, overnight, mm -hmm. or tomorrow morning, something will happen that will rally us the heck up out of here. And start heading north. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying just now. I mean, we have, let's face it, you know, we came off a pretty steep low early this morning, which I was able to capture, not not quite the lows, but fairly close to them. Uh, so, I mean, we're good. We're up a reasonable amount off the lows. Uh, can you put up the um, the weekly uh, weekly weekly chart? Sure. Uh, S and P. No, no, even the Nasdaq, like your order on. Uh, the Nasdaq, uh, okay. There's weekly. Now let's make it in Q. Yeah, I mean that's part of the problem. You know, it's very, very heavy. Okay. It's got, to, it's got, to, it's got to have a kind of a V bottom. And uh, remember, I said it's kind of like the Brexit thing. Mm -hmm. There's a chance because look, you know, we got that sort of leading up to the July Fourth holiday, um, and. You know, I'm fairly sure, I'm virtually certain we're going to have a bottom right after it. Uh, but we might get one before it. It's just a toss up at the moment. And we could even get one in the next day or two. But the. Uh, the okay, what up? Can, can, yeah, can you put up the day? Well, let's go to a monthly now. Well, first of all, that weekly is a very bad pattern. Uh, now, in order for me to go, I'm going to have to go at. In Q and use the uh, continuous chart, and then we can go monthly. Uh, monthly, there we go. There we go. Okay, now we got monthly, and we can go back. We're already back. Yeah, in November you can see that uh, kind of a doji monthly doji. Uh, it's uh, here, here, that's a here. yeah, that's a real problem, you know. But if we, if that were to go green by tomorrow, it might make the situation a, a lot better. Um, lower, it's, a, is, that a, is that a shooting star? It, it's just, it's not, it's not, look, it's not, uh, it's not terminal, it's not the end of the world. You know, because look, if we did get a kind of a, a, a rebound and that thing gets taken out, right? Imagine if that gets taken out time in the next 15 days or so. Uh, you could have a really, you could spark a pretty strong rally right up to 7,500 um, or higher even on this thing. 
So, because uh, it is a kind of, a, look, it's a kind of an upward consolidation, actually. Um, if you can put, go to the d daily just now. Go to the daily, sure. Yeah, let me get rid of these. Uh, yeah, you see, I mean, the daily isn't, look at the, little, I mean, potentially you've got a positive reversal there developing on the daily. And uh, it's, mm -hmm. You know, it's quite, I mean, look at the last time we had something like this happen. It was a little bit more of a sideways deal, but uh, back in April when we took off to the upside, uh, you know, we could easily take off. I mean, I think, I think there's something coming out of the, maybe the European Union and China next week. Maybe, uh, maybe over the July 4th holiday or maybe before it or after it. You know, look, look. Uh, if China buys that seventy billion, they said, and they add, you know, a couple of hundred planes or something, throw in, a, throw in a couple of hundred planes, which they probably need like crazy yesterday, uh, the market could explode higher, and uh, because it would, it would, you know, basically be, you know, get rid of this tariff stuff, and I think the the Europeans, you know, if they can find a way to reduce the tariffs. Um, I mean, these tariffs are going to come off like, you know, uh, rapidly now, or tariffs. You've been pretty uh, pleased with almost everything Trump has done, but you don't agree with these tariffs, do you? No, I, uh, well, you know, I don't agree with the way he kind of went in like a bull in a china shop, but maybe he had to do that to get their attention. But you know, what people are not, what the memo they're not getting right now is that he doesn't want any tariffs, you know, that he wants to eliminate tariffs worldwide. And that's, that's, a, that's you know, a, so bullish, you can't even think, fathom it. I mean, it's it's just incredibly bullish. There'll be a worldwide boom of monumental proportions if that happens. And we, we I think we're heading there, you know, we're heading, and, and look, you've got the GDP, which could be an up, upside surprise. I mean, even if the first quarter GDP came in at, you know, better than three percent. Um, that would be uh, that would be a very you know that 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 could be very well received. And don't forget the employment coming up in a few days' time uh, okay, tomorrow. I'm rather, at tomorrow's uh, news. We don't have any high impact news here in the U.S. However, yeah, and, and, and look, this is what could turn the market. I mean, you know, we're kind of setting up for a turn here. If the and remember how uh, look if we if we rally into the afternoon, it it usually means there's a good number coming out uh, the and you know we could be looking at 7200 tomorrow or you know we could be up 200 by tomorrow possibly uh, on this news there is and that would change news coming out of the UK Great Britain has uh, GDP tomorrow quarter over quarter and year over year uh, yeah. in the eurozone they've got the CPI that's high impact they also have an EU leaders summit that's considered to be a high impact event and yeah, well, uh, well, that's that. I mean, I think the EU leaders summit is where these tariffs are going to, you know, there's going to be some sort of a communique mm -hmm. about that. Um, you know, some working, you know, even if they say they're, you know, negotiating with Trump or something like that, 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 that that's all you need. I mean, you know, the markets could really rock higher because in many ways they've gone down on on talk rather than action you know most of this stuff hasn't even been implemented yet right. so there's that by the way you know there's some things going on in the world today that are just uh, you know amazing they're riveting uh, you know in terms of we're, we're in a place we've never been before in terms of global growth and global employment and you know this is it's it's actually quite intuitive to go back and look at the last 10 years or so of how a lot of countries were affected by this uh, downturn, you know, 2009, from 2007 to 2009. And, you know, in the case of the European Union, right through 11 and even right up to 14, 15, before the European Union really started recovering. Um, the uh, and, and the oil price had a lot to do with it, you know, because remember we peaked at a hundred, hundred plus dollar oil price, hundred and twelve dollars, 
And at and that gas, time, gas went over four dollars. People in Phoenix yeah, were literally yeah. giving away. Their but homes. at that time, uh, at that time, the GDP of Russia hit about two point two trillion. You know, which was uh, pretty pretty big for Russia. You know, uh, um, and uh, you remember the Chinese GDP was pretty strong as well. Uh, but the you know we were making new all time highs in the Chinese market at that time. Um, the incredible thing is it's not always the economy stupid because you know russia putin's popularity uh you know he he managed to shepherd a, 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 almost a, a cut a cut in half in the gdp then the gdp went down at the worst point about 1.1 trillion for russia it's picking up now but it's kind of amazing, you know, to have a country. I mean, it's kind of like a depression, you know. Uh, and when you look at the U.S., the U.S. has been cons consistently higher in spite of the 2007-9 situation, pretty much. Um, so it's been going real higher all, all through this uh, decade to where it is today, which is, by my estimate, at least 20.4 trillion going on 21. And um, the other surprise is the unemployment you know the unemployment is still pretty high in europe except for the uk but in some little pocket countries it's unbelievably low mm -hmm. uh, there are some there there are there's quite a few countries that have a G, an unemployment rate of less than one percent and um some of them are down to about half a percent unemployment and you know the us today is 3.8 percent uh, unemployment, but there's another country in the hemisphere that has a 3.2 percent unemployment rate, and I bet you, I bet you can't guess it. But it's uh, it's a fact. It just just came out a couple of days ago. Who is it? It's it's Mexico. Really? And and yeah, and when you think about what Trump was saying in the in the election about all the companies going to Mexico and all the jobs going to Mexico and everything, and remember in Mexico, you know, most wealthy families have maids and and servants and things, so you know the unemployment rate, the real unemployment rate is probably best it's ever been, um, and uh, that's actually good because it. It, you know, there, I mean, there are very few Mexicans going U.S. these days uh, in in terms of illegal immigration. Um, it's it's the Central American that 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 going there because of they're 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 really in trouble economically, um, and it, it's uh, it's um, unfortunate that that's that's happened. But it is. I, I think the gang thing is a bit overrated. You know, over over. Because there's a lot of there's actually quite a lot of Americans who live in Central America, and you don't hear any you don't hear them having any problems down there. You know they're probably living in the good neighborhoods and stuff. But uh, uh, I read an you know article all... yesterday that talked about the uh, most uh, the economic and friendliest places for expats Americans to live. It was the top ten places, and high up on that list was Colombia. You know, Colombia's uh, gone from being a you know drug drug infested country to being a pretty good place to live, uh, especially uh, of all places, Medellin. You know, Medellin oh, is very highly rated, very highly rated today. The top of the list was Portugal. Yeah, Portugal is a great place to live. Of all the places, uh, my wife and I thought of maybe in our golden years, uh, moving and living. Uh, we, I, we, I don't think Portugal was ever on our radar. No, Portugal is a is a. It's probably one of the few remaining cheap places in Europe where you can still buy a pretty nice house. You know, not not necessarily in a big city, but in, in some of these little villages. There's been a big exodus from a lot of these villages. So, I mean, if you're if you're a trader and you can survive from you know remotely, mm -hmm. and you want to live somewhere away from the rat race, you know, that's it's probably a pretty good choice. And you know, you're close to airports that can get you anywhere you want to go. Um, uh, so Portugal has, often, has actually been on my my radar for a long time, as an interesting place. And uh, you know, I've been all over the country, so I know the know the country pretty well. Uh, the uh, but uh, Portugal is a definite, and, and uh, look, they don't have too many problems over there with uh, crime and drugs and stuff. Uh, it's pretty laid back. Ecuador was on the list. Was on the list. Yeah, and the, the Portuguese president was in with Trump yesterday, and I thought he was very impressive. You know, he, he uh, 
very impressive guy. Uh, <clears throat> very, very uh, educated. The WikiLeaks guy. My wife said she heard something. Did the Ecuador embassy put him out? Uh, he's kind of getting the squeeze at the moment. He's still he's still in the embassy, but he's not allowed to communicate and things. Uh, it's pretty rough. Uh, Can but, anybody uh, walk into any embassy and request asylum? Is, I mean, how does that work? Uh, theoretically, yeah. Theoretically, yeah. Uh, it's but not just um, he was like a famous kind of a guy. Uh, well, I mean, he, he, you know, for whatever reason, the, the previous president took a liking to him, and that's why he got the mm -hmm. got the the deals he got. But uh, been you know, five, the new, six years he's been holed up behind those. Yeah, the new the new president is uh, not so keen, so uh, not not so friendly, and that's what that's what the problem is right now. And then there's this, you know, apparently there was an immunity deal being worked out potentially with Trump organization and uh, or Trump administration and um, it looks like Comey put a put in a put the, the skewers on that one because obviously it would blow the Russian deal right out of the water and um, I guess they didn't want to be embarrassed so you know uh, do you think this man this is an innocent whistleblower or is he a treasonous rascal who WikiLeaks yeah a bit of both, uh, you know. I, I think the, you know, the Snowden issue obviously is a big black mark against the guy, but a lot of the other stuff is a lot less, uh, you know, a lot less uh, um, severe, and probably, you know, a good good thing that people know about it. At least people and know they're being spied on. Where's Snowden these days? He's in Russia, but he's becoming someone non grata over there. I think he's kind of losing it because he's starting to. Uh, you know, badmouth the Russians or something, which to me is ridiculous, crazy. Yeah, and he's uh, saying you don't poop where you eat, so he <laughs> exactly. Not do that. So he might, he, he might be, uh, you never know, he might be booted out any time. Uh, now so, I know uh, back before the election, uh, he said that he had much more incriminating information that he was going to release on his campaign to the world. That, that never came, did it? No, I don't think so. Um, he was bluffing. Maybe that's why the Russians are tired of him because he's got he's got he doesn't have any uh, anything else to, to offer them. So he's lost his value. You know, he holds no value. He just it's kind of like the guy. I think about this. He's, in the he's a bit of he's a bit of a loose cannon. This guy. I mean, I think it's, you know he's kind of a strange dude. You know, well, this guy, uh, the the WikiLeaks guy in the in the embassy. I mean, he's got to eat three times a day. You know, he's got a shower. His clothes have to be washed. Uh, now, if, if I'm not mistaken, he has money. Uh, it's socked away in Bitcoin somewhere. So maybe he's able to pay for his stay there. Maybe he's not just, you know, freeloading off of the embassy. Uh, I think he is, actually. But uh, Oh, he is freeloading. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. You know, he may be doing stuff for them, you know, helping the country modernize and things like that. Plumbing, a little light carpentry. Uh, yeah, he's probably hacking somebody for him. I don't know. Uh, interesting. You know, when I was in the United States Navy, I had a top secret security clearance. It was the highest security clearance that someone in my field could get. Uh, I'm sure there were higher levels, but when I was in high, when I was in boot camp, the FBI came to my house in Thompson, in, in Martinez, Georgia. Uh, knock on the door. Hi, may I help you? I work with the FBI. Here to talk to you about your son. Oh my God, what did he do? You know, I thought he was in boot camp. He's like, hang on, lady. We're just here to vet his security clearance. And so they talked to my mom. They went and talked to my teachers at my high school. They talked to the girl I dated in high school. And, and I did end up with the secret security clearance. And so I had access to all of this stuff. But, you know, it never once even crossed my mind that the stuff I was looking at had any value other than to help me do my job and, and the thought of like, trading it or selling it or giving it to some you know bad actor uh it just you know I, I guess i had a lot at 21 i had a whole lot of other stuff on my mind uh yeah. Yeah. Um, so but, but think about it today there's all kinds of 21 year olds just like me with all kinds of stuff on their mind out there running around with access to this top secret classified information and no doubt the stuff that i had in my hands 
uh, I'm sure because I was uh, <clears throat> I was going to be in the nuclear field, but then long story. But I ended up being a sonar technician and working in sonar control, and we hunt submarines. No doubt the Soviets or whoever would have loved to get their hands on some of the information that I had access to, but it never, not once did it cross my mind to do something uh -huh. like that. But I think the 21-year-olds out there today are more educated, more sophisticated, more technologically savvy, and I think our government should really be, you know, keeping a very close eye on who has access to what. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to access. keep secrets these days. It's, uh, you know, there's so many ways that information can be transmitted around, you know, without, uh, without, you know, you know it's, it's being uh, scrambled. Uh, in, in sonar control, it was always about 50 degrees. You had to wear your pea coat. But there was these huge things that looked like refrigerators. I remember my first time in there. What's that? Oh, it's a computer. Huh. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the old the satellite navigator. Yeah, it was bigger, my, bigger, bigger, than, bigger than a file. Bigger than, 1972 was bigger than a filing cabinet. And uh, today it's on a wristwatch, you know. It's exactly. A, yes, exactly. Yeah. What do you think about these uh, the eye watches? I read a thing the other day that, boy, that's the thing of the future because it can monitor your heart rate. Can... Yeah, they, they've got a new app that's supposed to do that. It looks pretty, pretty good, actually. Pretty cool. Uh, and if you get in a car wreck and you're upside down, strapped into your seat, and you can't get to your cell phone because it went flying across the car, you've got that watch strapped on your wrist. You can still make a phone call. You can still get help. Uh -huh. They went through a whole list of incidents and because I never saw any reason for the watch myself. It's like yeah. uh, for the elderly folks out there, uh, you know yeah. this uh, jitterbug, this jitterbug phone. Uh, is kind of carved out quite a niche. Uh, the market's starting to go now, so it's a, it's it's yeah. a different, like another another wave. Guys, there's a live radio trade up on the screen. Crude seven hundred seventy to seventy three ninety. It's not a big deal, but it's a little something you might pick up. Uh, let me go look at the S and P. Okay, we're coming back up to that lowest weekly trading zone. From below, we're hitting the lowest weekly zone. Uh, now. Based on historical observance, we will close tomorrow above 27.12. Been a few instances over the last nine years where that didn't happen, but we're gonna, it's the high probability that it will, and this could be the beginning of it. We hit it here, we hit it here, we hit it here, we hit it here, and now we're getting ready to hit it again. If we can close over it and then take out these highs, we can shoot right up to this next zone overhead at 35.36. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to tell you, I'm going to mention something. Oh yeah, this jitterbug thing. So, uh, the, you know, they've got this life alert, you know, the one that I... Yeah, where you push a button and you fall down. I can't get up that yeah. one, you know. Mm -hmm. But the jitterbug actually has got the same feature. It's maybe a, a better deal altogether because you get the phone included. And it's kind of really pretty cheap i think we got it down to about 10 or 15 dollars a month you know uh, the problem yeah. is, is but you then you get the you get the life alert feature as well which is kind of pretty valuable actually now, it's quite alert, it's pretty good that, package. does that hang around your neck is that uh yeah i think that one does but the obviously the jitterbug is just like a phone but maybe you can tie it to yourself too but the uh but so it seems i just why the watch just, is such a good thing because it fits snug on your wrist and after a couple of days you forget it's even there kind of thing yeah 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 um, yeah because I can only imagine a person, they fall and they can't get up, and their jitterbug or their life alert, you know, it's like two feet away, well, they, they can't you, get to it. Yeah, you, I mean, you could have potentially, you know, on the Apple thing, you could have a blood pressure deal or a, some kind of a, you know, if these things are so sensitive today, they, they, they can detect. They can probably detect if you're having a stress, some sort of a stress event. Apple, so I think yeah. it's the Apple phone that has uh, some kind of thing built into it. If, if you fall down, it understands that a human being does not fall in that direction at that rate of speed. That, you know what I'm saying? So the watch kicks into gear. I don't know what it does, but it recognizes that you've fallen uh, just by the motion without, without you doing or saying anything. I don't know what the next step is. And so yeah. guys on Shark Tank one night, do you ever watch Shark Tank? Yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, what, what do you, what's your thoughts on the different folks on there? 
Anybody you like? Don't well, like? Some, some of them are really good, you know. Uh, I mean, some of them are, I mean, it's amazing that some of these ideas get such traction and especially the internet uh, sales are just staggering on some of these things, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the Shark Tank has had the benefit of being in a kind of a up wave uh, since, you know, since it started. So it's it's had a growing economy and um, and disposable income and everything like that. But I think a lot of those companies uh, could go under if there was a downturn, you know, um, except the very biggest, you know, the, the ones that have been run the best. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's the, the, uh, the you know, and, and the, you know, the, the shit, the tanks, the sharks themselves have had the, you know, so I think a lot of them made a lot of money. I mean, I don't, I don't listen, there's a, they're doing an awful, they're kind of handling probably too many deals these days. And, uh, you know, it's right. it's sort of becoming a kind of a pretty big thing to manage. All these things, um, you know, they've had some pretty big payoffs, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that not all of them are are a success, and uh, it's quite a few of them. Forty percent of the deals that they make on the show never even go through. Yeah, yeah, that's they exactly. So there's there is there's a, there's a weeding out process, yeah. and uh, you know things like that. And, and that so, one hour show, it takes them eighteen hours to film a one hour show so those guys th these wealthy folks are there for 18 hours and they're sweating and they're bickering with each other and it's uh i'm surprised that they that they keep coming back and the average pitch from one of these people who has a product or service that they're trying to get it the pitch runs about four hours two to four hours and then the editors you know on the cutting room floor trim it down to the 10 minutes that we see, you know, watching yeah, from home. Yeah. But the investors well, have to sit through the do, whole they thing. They do a good job, you know, in terms of, uh, and some of the, I mean, some of the deals have been uh, amazing, you know, and uh, some of the, and some of the sales that some of these people have had have been incredible. Well, one, uh, of the, one of the apps that somebody had built and came on the show, I don't think they got funded. It was, like on your cell phone, if you if a lady notices that somebody's like following her, she hits up some button on her phone or activates the app, and automatically it starts recording audio and video, and it sends a, a, a signal to some security company, and they immediately send people out to those coordinates, the latitude, the longitude. So uh, once it's activated, you can't unactivate it without the code. It was kind of interesting, yeah. but for some reason, they did not... Uh, they did not uh, get funded. I don't know why. Uh, you know, Mark Cuban, you think he's going to run for president? Uh, he might do. Actually, the, you, you raised the thing I wanted to talk about today anyway. Okay. You know, these recent rallies that Trump has been doing, like the one yesterday and uh, the one that we liked, Duluth, that was a particularly good one. Um, you know, this guy is such a force of personality. And he's the presence, and I mean, you know, everybody's been sort of doubting this guy from day one, and there was more hanging. You know, they dragged out Hayden and uh, uh, the fellow who used to be the head of Europe, Supreme Commander Wesley's Wesley. Um, you know, then all these guys are hang ringing. I mean, they just don't get it. This guy's a multi-billionaire. He's built a phenomenal business. People think they're dealing with a, you know. Uh, incompetent in the White House. I mean, at, at, any, at, any, at every turn, you know, CNN tries to get the word chaos in, 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 the, right. in, the, in the vernacular every single day. You know, it's just crazy, and they're so they're so opposite to what's really going on. You know, he's probably running the White House better today than most other presidents, and less stuff and less nonsense. You know, and it's stuff gets done. I mean, look. Look at look at the stuff that Trump did yesterday. You know, he's meeting the Portuguese run president. He's meeting. Uh, he's getting some other deal done. Uh, he, you know, then he's off to Dakota and he's there till late at night. You know, I mean, and and that, uh, he's in Wisconsin. I mean, you can't keep up with this guy. I know it's it's almost you you almost what you start to get suspicious, but then you remember he's a guy that doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, so he's probably not on any performance enhancing. You know. Right, and, and and I mean, I mean, listen. He's such a force of personality. He's so at ease with himself. 
in these meet in these rallies. Mm -hmm. There's just nobody in, in his league, and, and that it, unless somebody pops up that we don't know about yet. But they just—I don't think. Uh, I mean, listen, you know, Howard Schultz. Okay, oh my God, I'm quaking in my boots because, you know, a guy who's approximately the same net worth of, of Trump is going to challenge him. I mean, this guy is about the most boring guy on the face of the earth to listen to. You know, so it, it, it's, it's. I mean, is he going to come in there and rattle, rattle, rattle everybody up? I don't think so. He just doesn't. And this is, and Trump is, is you know, he's controlled. He's dominated the news cycle. Every new cycle, yeah. you know, since 2015. Karen That's, in the audience uh, uh, says that I heard that CNN's ratings last week were lower than the Food Channel. So I don't even, I, you know what, I used to kind of watch them to keep up with things. I don't even bother anymore because this, it's just descended into the same old nonsense every day. Same people, the same dragging up all these, who won hear from Obama cronies these days? I mean, there has been, you know, nobody wants to hear from them anymore. And all they do is a hand ring, oh my God, uh, you know, I can't, I can't bear to be, you know, for Trump and Putin to be in the same room because what might he say and all this, you know. I mean, look, he's made it. Trump, if anybody thinks Trump's going to get duped by North Korea, they, they're just, they're just, they're not getting the memo. It's plain and simple. And uh, a lot of things, look, you remember. Has this become the I mean, new conspiracy? Listen, listen, you know, North Korea refused to talk to anybody, literally, for for several decades. They, you know, it was, a, it was a miracle that they managed to get, you know, a government official to go over there. Uh, this the whole thing has been completely turned upside down in in record time, and the the, the whole animosity has been eliminated practically over overnight. And uh, there's a there's a you know the potential for a general. And I said it on this show before the long before this meeting. Remember, I said, what is, what does Kim really want? He wants to go and watch a basketball game, a basketball game in Madison Square Garden. That's one of his lifelong dreams. And I can guarantee you, we're gonna before this unless he screws up which you know it's always possible you know you're going to see trump and him sitting together in madison square garden before this 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 thing is over i'm telling you it's coming and uh the you know when you it's 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 sort of like listen you know mexico uh, they used to yeah, remember back in the 90s they used to yell and scream in mexico you know when are you going to grow your economy when are you going to do this when are you going to do that so you know mexico does you know it has more trade agreements than any what any country on earth right now what? trade agreements oh. than any country on earth hmm. and they've done an awful lot that i mean there's a lot of things in mexico that are you know uh, the u.s could use uh, themselves i mean first of all they have uh, uh, you know, the incredible uh, deal to communications deal there's no more there's no long since everybody can can call anybody in the country that's but that was eliminated a couple of years ago much to the pain of Carlos slim i guess that, that's where he stopped being the richest guy in the world when that happened and uh, you know but he couldn't do that in the u.s today probably but they had the power to do it in mexico and they did it and you know international calls are almost uh, practically free you know uh, the, the, so it's an incredible situation uh but they, you know, the country has, I mean, look, the S&P was, was flat 10 years in the U.S. Uh, from, uh, you know, from 2000 to, to, to 2010 before it started going up. And uh, Mexico's market went up about seven, sevenfold, seven, seven, seven hundred percent. And so did Brazil's. So, you know, there was a huge uplifting in Latin America. Uh, and today, look, there's still a huge gap between the two countries. But, uh, you know, in another five or 10 years, the gap could be, you know, they're saying that the Mexican economy is going to be bigger than France. You know, it might be the number five or number seven economy in the world. So there, the, the quicker that happens, the more there, uh, there is a buffer between you know, Latin America and people coming to the to the U.S. and I, I would say, pretty, pretty. Um, you know, in spite of the the rhetoric, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if Trump gets some deals done that are going to you know curb this immigration uh, wave once and for all. Um, they, he's certainly got a lot of leverage over the country, and um, will you know? I'm sure that uh, it's going to be a win-win for everybody in the in the end. Uh, which is always Trump's goal. So, the but the um, the the uh, 
the good things going on around the world today are are staggering. I mean, you know, you know, when you see, well, the the, the amazing thing is you've seen the juggernaut U.S. continue to grow, uh, and even China, which supposedly is growing at seven percent, I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. They, I'm sure they're they're fogging it uh, quite a bit. Because I mean, if they were growing at a seven, what, what, why is the Chinese stock market, you know, making new lows? It's down twenty percent on the year. If things are so great in China, I mean, I know they're great, but you know, the stock market's down dr drastically off the highs and in, in a fairly short space of time. And so, you know, the, the, and this is the danger to the world that not even can, Trump can control really. Uh, no matter how much he tries to get the U.S. growing, you know, to a certain extent, China can drag the U.S. down, and that's does, one of the biggest. That's, does China ultimately overtake the U.S. economy, John? Oh, it, it's inevitable, but uh, it, 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 and it's in some in some respects, it's already overtaken the U.S. economy. I mean, there, there are more billion there is there are more billionaires in Asia now than in the U.S. There's almost as many billionaires in China as there are in the U.S., and there's more millionaires in China today than there are in the U.S. That's an incredible statistic. So you know they're they're rapidly they're getting they're growing much more wealthy. They're growing very more and more wealthy all the time. And um, if we continue this wave of growth, and if obviously if they continue at seven percent growth uh, for the next few years, they're gonna they're they're definitely gonna catch up with the U.S. Uh, Probably in the twenties, not thirties. Uh, I, you know, it's inevitable by about twenty thirty. But I think they might catch up as soon as, uh, as soon as, um, you know, next. Uh, uh, and and if there's, you know, if there's some sort of a me meeting of the minds with Taiwan, where they get assimilated like Hong Kong and uh, Macau, you know, that would give them a quantum leap uh, in GDP uh, higher as well. So. Uh, but going back to North Korea, and then this, you know, I was, was getting, getting at is that, you know, Mexico has, because it has the border with the U.S., it's obviously um, the, you know, it's the second largest trading partner after Canada. But remember, you know, Mexico's population is much bigger than Canada's, and they're growing wealth, more wealthy all the time, and they're doing more trade. So it's, a, it's only a matter of time before Mexico becomes the number one trading partner with the U.S. And secondly, they're they're attracting a lot of business from China to Mexico, and you know, there's most seventy thousand companies that left the U.S. have showed up in Mexico. So uh, the and as I pointed out some time ago, the U.S. has lost five million jobs since two thousand, and the if the num so this uh, if but if you if you take the the Mexican economy and the number of people, you know, being one third, and remember the economy is one tenth the size of the US, uh, not even one tenth, it's like almost a twentieth of the size of the US. When you take that into account, and then you look at the man, and then you extrapolate up the number of manufacturing jobs in Mexico, which would be a triple, uh, Mexico, the US has 12 million manufacturing jobs right now, used to have 19 or some, I uh, think, and uh, the um, Mexico has a, has eight million manufacturing jobs, but it has a third of the population. So if you triple that up, you you know on the same scale in the U.S., Mexico would have 24 million manufacturing jobs, which is incredible. That would be twice twice as many as the U.S. So you know, look at where all the jobs have gone. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so so um, and obviously the you know the same in China. China may be, may be pricing itself out of the market. Mexico is still competitive, you know, a, a, kind of a very attractive location to, to put new companies in, to, for new companies to start up because of the access to the U.S. And, uh, and because of its trade agreements as well. So, but when you look at North Korea, you know, over the years, remember, you know, in, in, in decades, taking each decade, you know, from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you know, Japan was the cheap manufacturing location, you know, 30, 40 years ago before it priced itself out of the market. And by the way, you know, this is why I wouldn't be too worried about the future that everybody's like saying, oh my God, you know, we've got 21 trillion of debt. And if you listen to Norman, he doesn't think it is a debt, you know, so he thinks it's an asset. Uh, but the 
the Japanese have two and a half times the debt of the US GDP per capita. I think it's around 250, 250%. Uh, do you want to know what the, the unemployment rate in Japan is today? How much? How about 2.4%? Or 2.2 percent. So, as I said, you know, about a year ago on this show, you know, what's not to like about Japan? I mean, if 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 we end up, you know, with 250 percent debt in 2040, and we still have three three percent or two and a half percent of you know, unemployment, uh, what what would why wouldn't you want that? You know, so uh, it's. I mean, I'm not saying we want it, but. Uh, and, and actually, government revenues are record. When we start to see May revenues and June revenues and July revenues come out, if they're anything like the April revenues, the U.S. government's going to be in a surplus. You know, it could could actually be in a surplus situation. I think it was in a surplus. It made it made 234 billion profit in April. That's not, that's never happened before. 234 billion profit in April. And they had record revenues of 510 billion, half a trillion in one month. Imagine that. So there's some, some, some amazing things are happening. And obviously, if Trump can get some of these tariffs removed and can even out the, uh, the uh, deficit with China, uh, it's going to have a, a massive uh, impact. And remember, all the stuff that was put in place about a year ago with a visit to Saudi Arabia, where they got, you know, three, four hundred billion in military orders, those are probably starting to, to, to be, you know, to actually happen now. So it, it, these are things that a lot of people haven't taken into account in terms of possible big run up in GDP going into the end of the year. And, and just the economic momentum and 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 then you know there's all these little countries around the world that are doing as well if not even better than the US in some respects you know not not from a, a dollar standpoint but for, in their own small way some of these countries are, are I mean you know Malta in the in the Mediterranean has a 0.4 percent unemployment rate Four. Interesting. you know uh, I have uh, a neighbor that I've talked about on the radio for years. Most, most of the folks know who I'm talking about, but anyway, don't know her personally, but know of who I'm speaking. She was, she recently retired. Uh, she got an early retirement package. She was a civilian who worked at the Air Force Base out here in Glendale. Uh, God, I forget what it's called. But anyway, she worked there for many years. She originally was a programmer, but somehow she got sidelined to like a desk job answering the phones. She made $100,000 a year to sit at a desk and, and pretty much answer the phone, uh, come in late, leave early, take days off. I mean, I, I was just astounded at this whole thing. There's a lot of people making money like that. And and then, I mean, and she, and she got the early retirement package and she's kind of going crazy sitting at home. Plus, she's got some bills and because she didn't get 100% of her pay, but I think she got 50% or something. So she's been trying to get a job. And every place she goes, uh, the answer is you're overqualified. Uh, she goes, but I think it's really my age. Well, she's not. She doesn't look old. She doesn't look like a teenager. But they're not allowed to ask how old you are. They're not allowed to ask your birth date. That, that's been a law for a long time. <coughs> so I'm wondering how many other people in, because you have, our unemployment is so low. You've got so many young, youthful, healthy people looking to, you know, go to work and many of them have computer skills I wonder how many people like her I think she's representative of a segment of society that is going to find it increasingly difficult to get a job yeah uh, I mean you know I think there's it's look there were all kinds of forecasters including Obama <laughs> who said these jobs are never coming back remember that's but say yeah, the favorite sure. line mm -hmm. uh, who who uh, you know the fact that they are coming back and that, that new jobs are being created and we are where we are today is just the way the world works you know and we don't know i mean listen i guarantee you if if automated driving you know uh, uh what do you call it um what was it again you said auto automated driving uh, 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 yeah autonomous I, autonomous yeah, autonomous 
that's coming you know it's coming and and listen i i'm yeah, telling you the, if the fellow who was driving that the, 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 i know there was a woman driving that uber car yeah. i don't think anybody could have stopped uh, an accident uh, with that bike but uh, it uh, they, you couldn't see it i mean it came out of nowhere if you see the video i mean listen you know it was the car was practically on the bike or before you could even see it so you know i mean sympathies to the people who were who were killed and the, the guy who was killed and the, and the, and, the, and the, the family and everything but i mean listen you know act, accidents happen and uh, i don't think there was any way that accident wouldn't have happened in any any way shape or form i mean the guy shouldn't have been crossing the, 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 in the you know with the car coming he could have seen the he would have had to have seen the car um you know coming uh, so you don't know whether the guy was drunk or on drugs or whatever the heck you know was going on. Or uh, so well, I, I think it was a decision to. Uh, yeah, yeah, you just don't know. I mean, it was extremely unfortunate, but I think this, the the Uber's taking a lot of heat over that, and I think it was almost unavoidable in any circumstances. Uh, but the 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 the, the, the autonomous the autonomous driving is coming. That is going to be. Listen, the, once that gets going and people get retrofitted get their cars that are the retrofitted to do this, it's going to create an unbelievable amount of jobs because it's going to make all these garages, you know, service stations, you know, they're going to be, people are going to want this fast, you know, they're going to want it. And if it's not too expensive, you know, a few hundred dollars or something to, to retrofit your car or maybe even a thousand bucks, a lot of people are going to want it. Even if they can pay it off, you know, it gets financed and they pay it off over time. Uh, it's going to be a huge jobs generator, and uh, boy, that seems like a that seems like a stretch that you could retrofit. You're saying retrofit an ordinary car? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think I think Google, and that's why Google is going to probably make a new all time eyes again soon because they've got the lock on on the, the the you know Waymo. That's what they're that's what they're working on. You know, the, to 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 have a, a marketable package. To, to to sell to the to the billion cars worldwide, you know, and uh, it's it's it's. I mean, it's once once it becomes mainstream, you know, everybody's going to want want this stuff because, you know, if you can read the papers while you're commuting, or if you can do work while you're commuting to the office, you know, that's 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 uh, that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, I wonder how long it takes you to get comfortable enough to take your eyes off the. Well, it's, it, I mean, it's coming, you know, it's like anything, it's coming. It's, it's, and the, um, I mean, this, the other day at the French Grand Prix, they had a fellow on a, uh, on a, you know, you know, those water things, the water jets where you can, yeah, where you, yeah, 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 yeah. Really okay, he was, line, uh, okay. He, he was on one of those without the jets. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, this, this, and he, you know, he was just sort of flying around and navigating. It was, I mean, he was, it wasn't like the James Bond thing with a backpack. It was actually the same, almost an identical thing to the water jets where he just was literally sat on a kind of a propulsion unit that was keeping him airborne and enabling him to just go anywhere he wanted. It was really, really spectacular. And th those things aren't that far away. They're coming, you know. And so, so is hypersonic transport. I mean, I, I think hypersonic transport is the next big thing, uh, and it may come sooner. You know, the the, the the Boeing showed this plane yesterday. You know, New York to London in two hours, and imagine flying to Sydney in like about six or eight hours you know it would be pretty incredible sydney. I, I i flew to sydney I, I forget where i flew from but i flew to sydney in the belly of some kind of uh airplane it, was, it wasn't an airplane that had seats it was like a transport uh military it was a, a navy hop they called it you get to fly for free uh oh my god what a nightmare that was uh, people complain about not getting any peanuts so what kind of internet speed do you have? South Korea has the fastest internet in the world, supposedly. Yeah. What, do you, what kind of speed do you get? Well, I supposedly have 100, uh, but as most people who supposedly have 100 know, you don't always get it. <clears throat> but the, uh, the average in the United States is 19. Yeah, yeah. I think that's gonna in, that's in for a quantum leap for soon. Remember I told you I had a friend who's, who, uh, 
it's a, in a company that gives you a, you get a gig of, a gig of speed that's their kind of standard you know well, gigabyte. you know i was on the phone with cox the other day and uh i was t and the lady goes well you know we could bump you to the to the to the gig and i'm got well it's not available in my area yet oh yes it just became available and i'm like wow. okay how much uh nine hundred dollars a month no, they're offering a gig for about 100 or maybe I think there's some packages there where you can get it for 30 or 40, in, which in is amazing. In, in Phoenix? Not in Phoenix, no, in San Francisco or, or in Washington State, somewhere well, like that. There's this company uh, in San Francisco. It only serves a small part of the Bay Area. Uh, yeah, it's crazy fast and it's dirt cheap. And they say they're going to be able to scale all across America. I can't think yeah, of what, what's the name of that company? I can't think of it. I heard it on a. a I, th I think it's the one that my friend worked for. I think that's the one. Is yeah. it out of the out of the Bay Area? San well, they, they they're in Washington State and in San Francisco, but the the uh, the you know the next generation is coming, including the five G, and that's going to be a that's going to be a really big really big deal. And listen, that thing you mentioned yesterday, this Tubi thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the whole streaming, the whole the whole dish sort of thing uh, is being kind of superseded by streaming these days because it's cheaper and um you know, the uh, um at&t merger now with all the content they have is is enabling them to provide unbelievably competitive services and speed and the whole nine yards you know we can get tv on your phone and all this sort of thing um it's and streaming and everything else you know for you play this to be on my on my iPhone, I can't make a decent phone call. Because you're breaking up, uh, but I can play uh, a movie from Tubi, and and it's it's unbelievably clear. There's no stuttering. There's no buffering. Uh, yeah. And, and last night I figured. Well, out, the, I had tried you know, it. all this stuff is now 4K. You know, the coming 4K, and 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 that's a that's a huge deal as well in of itself. So, you know, there's there, there's some. I mean, look, look, this 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 is a wave that's really powerful. That's 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 taking over the world right now uh in terms of getting information to the consumer uh, you know uh, video everything you know everything everything you want michael p in the audience says i have wind stream fiber to the office one gig 60 bucks a month yeah that's, that's, uh, i think you got the best deal in the house uh yeah who wouldn't want that roberto who says he gets 300 from cox 300 down 30 up He's in Casa Grande. I don't know how much. He didn't say how much he's paying for it. But uh, I've got 200 down, 20 up, which, you know, quite frankly, it, it, that's more than, I don't, I don't need any more than that. Uh, yeah. I guess. Nice well, I mean, look, I mean, look at what Facebook's done for the world with this WhatsApp thing. I mean, where you can call anybody anywhere in the world for free. I mean, you know, it's just. It's fantastic, I, I, when and, I and, and FaceTime and this video. You know, we can we can be on a video phone halfway around the world. It's uh, it's 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 amazing. When I hired my software engineer uh, out of Venezuela and my designer out of uh, Pakistan, uh, it's like how are we going to communicate? And you, you just said it right there. WhatsApp. If you use yeah. between WhatsApp and Slack, you don't ever have to pay another communication bill as long as you live except for your internet access yeah and and you know the the, the the i mean i said it a long time ago you know the zuckerberg is very clever because i remember what he paid for whatsapp i think he only paid a billion dollars for it uh or maybe it was six i don't know but it was cheap <laughs> it's more compared to what it's today and the uh the but he's effectively hijacked the world's telecommunications system by establishing a platform which can handle everything voice data video the works and it's 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 really like a whole worldwide communications platform that really he's got the got the his monopoly on right now yeah and, and he's coming and, after youtube's yeah. lunch that's that's where he's going next he's coming yeah. after youtube's lunch and what i don't understand is why he hasn't eaten paypal's lunch already maybe uh, it's probably car. paying him to hold back i don't know uh or maybe he owns a lot of stock in uh in uh paypal or the company behind paypal i i don't know but he has see paypal goes through all these conniptions to prove that you are who's, who you say you are and a 
they make three deposits in your bank and you got to report back, oh, it was a penny, it was two pennies, it was, you know, five cents. And then finally they believe you are who you say you are. Well, Mark already knows who you are. He knows who your yeah. grandmother is, where your aunt lives, who your uncle good sleeps point. with. Good point. Jeez, I mean, he's got it all. It was a flip of a switch. PayPal would be shut. I, I don't know. That's that's a mind boggler. Akiran reminded us that uh, tomorrow is into the quarter. Window dressing, all kinds of stuff can happen tomorrow. Yep. Yep. Sure. That's why you know we're trying to. I don't know whether we the the markets are still having a real hard time rallying here. Look at here. It can't stocks. get above this twelve thirteen. This yeah. close weekly zone. But when the markets, when everybody's not watching, like at the beginning of Globex, the start of the Asian session, that might be when they do it. Maybe, maybe London does it. Maybe the European session. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't happen this time. Maybe this goes down in history as one of the times we closed below the lowest weekly zone. I won't believe it till I see it. But if that's, what, if that's how it plays out. We're going to yeah. trade whatever's in front of us uh, yeah. as long as it's in front of us. <clears throat> okay. Well, listen, thanks very much Thank for you. the invite. Have a great Bye. afternoon. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okie doke. Let me take care of his mic for him. Looks like he already took care of it. No, there it is. Got it. Okay. A reminder, partners meeting tonight. If you are a partner, we'll do our best to start on time, which you know probably means 10 after. And if you already know what your questions are, and it's it's so helpful if you either have a chart of a particular trade or at least the coordinates, okay? In fact, let me show you something that's really clever. I didn't know you could do this until the other day. Our good friends, friends over at TradingView.com. We've not launched a joint initiative yet, but I do look forward to doing that at some point, someday. Um, I was looking at the New York Stock Exchange tick the other day. Why? Oh, I suppose because I could. Uh, I'll just use this. Let's see what happens. I can show you what I want to show you. B A C. I was saying that if you have the coordinates, like in the training room, right, and you can say on on June twenty fourth at three p.m. Eastern, I placed a long trade on crude. We can go right to that in a heartbeat. We don't have to jostle back and forth. And is this it? Is this it? If you know the market the day and the time. You don't even have to send us a chart. We just pop it up and walk you through whatever that trade was. Okay? Okay. So here's what I wanted to show you. If I can find it now. Hmm. Where would something like that be? When I was playing with it the other day, it said, go to. Now, this is actually <clears throat> this is actually quite the thing here. Uh, I think I've already showed this to you guys. Come over here, and, and you see where price is right here. <clears throat> Come over here and click that candle. And then click play. You see it? From where I had moved my, it's it'll take you, and you can speed it up. Right now, you're getting an update every three seconds. There's an update every one second. Now, watch it go to work. Now, I've seen lots of platforms with lots of market replay, but boy, this is sweet. And you can even pick up the pace if you want. Let's see how fast she can go. Look at that. Bada boom, bada bing. I remember I clicked this candle. These are one minute candles and it just walked us through the whole thing. Man, that's, that's pretty cool. All right, 
But that isn't the thing I wanted to show you. It says go to. Now, where would I have seen that? Would I have seen it here? No. Would I have seen it here? No. Here. Mm. No. Here. No. Here. No. Well, trust me, somewhere hidden on this lovely chart is a place where you can say, when you click it, it'll say go to, and you can put in a day and a time, and instead of you having to scroll and scroll and scroll, when you click it, it will take you right to, right to that day and that time on the chart. That's pretty good alert stuff too. Now they have a free package and then they have a real-time data package. Boy, for the life, I, mean, I didn't... I'd have wrote it down if I'd have known it was going to be so hard to find again. But I'll find it and I'll show it to you tomorrow, I guess. Uh, what's this guy? Uh, maybe one of you will find it playing around. So you can go to their site and you can play around right away. Uh, I think you're no, you don't have real-time data. I'm pretty sure I have a real-time data package for some stuff. Uh, but it's there. And you know what I'm talking about. Let's see, you wanted, let's say you had a trade on June 15th at 2 p.m. Eastern. If you can find the little pop-up box, you type in June 15th and, you know, 3 p.m. Eastern, go, and it, it just pops up on the screen right there. Why somebody hasn't done that sooner, I don't know, but it's a pretty cool little feature, so tradingview.com uh, if you go there and use our stuff we don't make any money yet but we will don't worry we're, we're working on it uh, we put something together okay 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 um, oh Ron says it's down at the bottom thanks Ron if it was a snake it would have been me Somebody snake down at the bottom ah right here go to Thanks, Ron. I don't feel stupid at all. <laughs> so, let's say you wanted to go to 6-5 at, oh, I don't know, 3-15. Well, there you are. I'm sure every platform will have this as soon as they reverse engineer it and figure out how the heck they did it. But for any of you that have been hanging around charts for a while, that's cool beans, right? Ron, you found it for me. What do you think, Ron K? Is that a neat feature or what? Don't leave me hanging, Ron. I think there's a delay in the chat box. Maybe 200 megs is not enough. All right, Ron, strong, silent type. All right, you take care. He refuses to answer. Hmm. Okay, then. I'm just, I'm just fun and Ron. Uh, okay. Now, I didn't really get over a chance to go over the trade alerts today. On the S&P, we did suggest selling 2,700. In fact, I haven't. I've been forgetting to drag this over for a screenshot, but if anybody wants a screenshot, I'm going to drag it over. And yesterday was, last night was no extraordinary night. Not like the ones we've had of late anyway. But if you want to grab a screenshot, and if you're on the GoTo software, uh, up at the top, it used, there used to be a little thing that looked like a camera. It still does. But it, now it says next to it, screenshot. So... All you got to do is click it, and you're done. And if you use the Chrome browser, I'm guessing you know that there are screen recorders. There's like an extension or a plug-in for the Chrome browser. 
Did I download that last night? Um, see, I can't go to the Chrome store too often because if I do, I start downloading all kinds of cool little things. And then pretty soon your browser gets very sluggish. I can see right now. Oh, here's another one that you might find of interest. Uh, I'll show you what I have so far. Oh, this one is hot. And now I tried to put it on my wife's computer last night. And I couldn't find it in the Chrome store. It's called Grammarly. It will correct your grammar and your spelling as you type. Email, writing, writing something in Word. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, I didn't realize how bad my writing was until I put this free plugin in and it started correcting me. Uh, take that comma out. You should have put a comma here. I mean, it just, and it just stay, it keeps pace with you. As soon as you hit space and go to the next word, it'll pop up a little thing and show you and, and if it tells you that you should have put a comma there, you don't have to put a comma there. You just click the area where it says you should have put a comma there, and it puts it there for you. And it's free. This, I, I want to get rid of it. Pinterest, I, I don't do Pinterest anymore. Google Hangouts, I do use. Last pass. When I go to sites that require password, I never have to type them in because last pass does it for me. Uh, then the Grammarly, and then the MetaMask. I got to teach all of you how to use MetaMask. If you don't have MetaMask, you need MetaMask, and I'm going to make a video. Uh, VidIQ vision for you. Uh, yeah, you don't need that. Flipboard. If you don't have Flipboard on your iPad or your tablet, man, you're not living. Every time I pick up my phone or an iPad, the first thing I do is I go to Flipboard. I talked about this the other day. It's like a digital magazine that you are the publisher. You're the publisher because you tell it all the things you're interested in and it lives to gather stuff you'll find interesting. And every time you open it, there's new stuff that you are interested in because you told it. All right, <clears throat> enough of that. Uh, my Ether Wallet CX, that's cumbersome. Uh, Right on web. You know, it sounded cool when I was in the store. But I'm not exactly sure what it does. Do I want to write on the web? Okay, I'm going to go. You can't see the whole thing because it's... Yeah, okay. So, do I want to write on the web? I guess I do. What do these do? Hmm. Hope you already took your screenshot. Okay. I hope that's the eraser. Well, what's that? Ah, that's the eraser. Well, what's that? Hmm. Well, it was the eraser. There we go. All right, all gone. And what else I got? Oh, this is the one that I thought you might find interesting. Uh... It's a screencast recording. It says it's for Gmail. It's brought to you by the good folks at Gmail, but it seems to work. You can do your entire screen. You can do an application window. You can do a just one tab in Chrome. Uh, I haven't really used it yet, and I don't want to use it, so I'm going to turn it off. Now, how do I turn this bad boy off? Oh, I probably got to click it here right on the web I'm going to get rid of most of this stuff because it does bog down your browser finance toolbar is off well let's turn it on okay now it's on what's it going to do yeah I don't know that I'm I mean I got shorts and stuff do I need this I don't think so Arizona passes. Okay, let's turn that toolbar off. Off. There we go. Okay, next. What do I got? Uh, turn off the lights. Yeah. That's definitely going because I can't figure out what it does. This. 
I'm not sure. Oh, I think this was supposed to be email templates or something. Moz bar. Insta oh, now this one's actually kind of cool. Instapaper. It's not coming up. I used to use Instapaper all the time. When I was on my phone or my tablet, if I found something interesting I wanted to share on the radio show, I would just click the Instapaper tab. It would store it in the cloud. And then the next day on the radio show, I could just open my Instapaper and it would have all the cool stuff I found in the last 22 hours since the show. And I could share it rather than going, man, I saw this and, and now I can't find it. You know, you know how I do. All right. Enough carrying on. It's the Google Chrome Store. Thousands of interesting and fascinating little widgets that you can add to your Chrome browser for free. The price is certainly right. You can't argue with that. There's probably some that you can pay for as well, but uh, there's so much free stuff. Now, they do give you a warning every time you install one. Be careful. Make sure you know who, you know, made the... We're not responsible if you get hacked, whacked, or whatever. Okay, uh, and Firefox has a lot of plugins too. Not as much as Chrome. A lot of the Chrome ones will work in Firefox. You just have to kind of double check. <clears throat> All right, so on the trade alerts, we said to consider selling 2720. Is that right? No, 2700. And we got down to 2696. So that was a four point move. I can live with that. And we said to consider buying 2720 if you got the opportunity, and that has not happened. It could happen going into the close. Well, you sent the alerts last night. Are they still valid today? Oh, yes. They're valid every time they trigger up until the next set of alerts come out. Just don't hold any orders open between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern. All right. On the Dow. Last night on the Dow, consider selling 24.065. So that's going to be here. So we'll call that, we'll be conservative and call it 65 points. At $5 a point, that's not bad. On the flip side, we said to consider buying 24,190. You had a chance over here to buy 190, but it didn't take you far. And we're back up at 190 again. On the Russell, we said to consider selling 1642, given the opportunity. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So from 1642, we got down to a low of 1637. All right. So that's you know, four and a half points, I think that was. And it did it again, and it did it again, and it did it again, and it did it again. The NQ. So 7019, if the opportunity presents. 7019. We were... Where were we? 7019 is right here. How do these go out? 715. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, it's by 7019. <clears throat> okay. But you know that because you just took a screenshot. So by 7019, yeah, you only got up to. Well, I take that back. You got up to 7026. That's $140 per contract. It triggers again and takes you up to uh, takes you up 39 points plus 39 plus uh, 19. That's about 60 points. Call it 50. That's a thousand bucks. No, I don't, that doesn't somehow. No, 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 no. I know what I did wrong. My math was faulty. It needs to be. 
19 minus, no, wondering, the world's watching, 40 minus 19. We'll call it 21. At $20 a point, that's $400 per contract available. And if you get a chance, sell 7,001. Oh, 7,001. You took a haircut there, but then next time down, you got to a low of 69.56. So we'll round that up to 60. So that's $800 per contract available. And that unfolded over the course of one hour. These are 30 minute candles. Crude oil uh, refused to go up and take advantage of that uh, radio trade. Did I delete that? Oh, no, I did it over here on the five minute. Yeah. Okay. Now, I broke a cardinal rule here by even putting that trade up. And the first person to tell me what rule I broke will get a uh, pat on the back and a firm handshake. This is exactly, but however, I mean, I covered myself because I put my entry up at 70 and it marched, what's the swing high? It's, it marched right up and gave a little kiss. This is a five minute chart. It went the other way. Now, here's the real question. <clears throat> what is the trade here? Remember I know? Here's what we want to see. We want to see a big bull green candle. Yeah. For, I want to see this hook down. I don't like the way it's laying there flat. I want to see this hook down a little bit. And uh, can it hook down? Something looks odd there. But anyway, I want to see a, green, a big bull green candle. I want to see it pull right up to the CFMA1. Maybe even spike it and leave a wick. That's the bulls showing me the best they got right here, right now. Big green candle. And the bear, the bears, slap it down. And we get a definitive red candle. Green candle, red candle. Man, the open of that next candle, I'm going to sell it like I stole it. Because if I only get down to here, I've had a nice run. I get down to here, it was a really nice run. And if I get down to here, I could take tomorrow off. If I didn't have to work. Come to a private mentoring session. These are the kinds of things I teach you in the one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions. And uh, try it, you might like it. All right, gold, the sad tale of gold. Oh, gold. Uh, sell 1251. Okay, doke. That would be right about here. And, well, it's nothing to write home about. I tell you, there's some of these markets I looked at last night. It's like, you know what? I don't even want to put alerts out on those markets because I don't see them going anywhere. However, since I'm committed to eight markets every night, come heck or high water, that's what I do. And that's what I did. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Okay, where's the S&P? Look at that wick building, Doji, right at the lowest weekly zone. We get below it, we come back to it, below it, 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 back to it. It's that magnetic quality that I often speak of for lack of a better term. What we need is we need a green candle to close above in a perfect world, and tomorrow we'll look back and see if we got this. In a perfect world. Green candle. Red candle. Green candle. A leg, you know, a serious leg. A leg 
filled with purpose and destiny. Pulls back, confirms good support, and it's off to the zone overhead. And if that doesn't happen, <clears throat> you can take this low and drag your trend line up across those lows. And if you get a close below that trend line, I suppose you sell it at least down to just above the lows. Keeping in mind that there could be a trader Vic here because it gets below the trend line and that puts it below the zone. So it comes back up to kiss the underside of that trend line. That's the trader Vic and the zone because that's just how it works. <clears throat> See here, it would look something like this. Nice shorting opportunity there. Yeah. From, I was at four points. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, can you share the gold zones? Yeah, Mike, you bet I can. Not that they're going to help you much, but I will. Um, I think we already blew out the lowest zone. No, uh, we did not. Okay, so we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Hoping that we don't see the bottom. Just for the sake of time, I'll tell you what they are and I'll just drop one line for right now. It's the lowest weekly zone is 1230 slash 31. Twelve thirty slash thirty one. Above that we have fifty one fifty two. Hmm. I didn't realize I don't ever do that on purpose. Last night on gold I said sell twelve fifty one. Apparently I was too lazy to check my zones and realize that you don't put a trade alert right on top of a zone. Because if you do, you get this kind of stuff. All right, so 1251 slash 52. 51 slash 52. Okay. And then above that, 63 slash 64, which we already have on the chart. And above that, 7071 and 7879. Then 85, 86, and then me being forever hopeful, 13, 10, slash 11. Did you get everything, Mike? Did you need me to repeat anything? You are very, very welcome. Our good word for today, your personal provider. Psalm 23, 5, you prepare a table before me. And of course, it goes on to say in the presence of my enemies. When the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, he was affirming that he had a very personal relationship with God. One that was unique. God has given, let me just stop right there. Do you ever wonder why God calls us sheep? Why not zebras? Why not horses? Why not sparrows? Why not chickens? Why sheep? Well, you may not like the answer, but the sheep is the, I'm, I know this sounds mean-spirited, a sheep is the dumbest and filthiest animal on planet Earth. I know sheep lovers are gonna argue. They do make a nice sweater. I'll give you that. But they are the dumbest and filthiest animals on planet Earth. If a sheep gets toppled, knocked over, falls down, a sheep does not have the ability to get itself back up on its own four feet. The shepherd must come and help the sheep get back up on his feet. There's a whole long story behind that whole thing about why God calls us sheep, but that's the only part of the sermon I wrote that I can remember, so we'll leave it at that. And again, my apologies to all sheep lovers. Okay, 
when the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, he was affirming he had a very personal relationship with God, one that was unique. And God has given each one of us a one-of-a-kind personality, gifting, purpose, and calling. So stop trying to be somebody else. Whether it's a traitor that you admire or, I don't know, whatever it is you do in your life. There's probably somebody you're like, man, I wish I was that guy, you know. I wish I had his looks, his car, his wife, his house. I think there's something in the Bible about don't covet your neighbor's donkey, <clears throat> right? Now, God gives us each a one-of-a-kind personality, and he wants a relationship with you that is unlike the relationship he has with anyone else. Just like your fingerprints are unique, so also is God's interaction with you. You need to learn how to hear his voice and know when he is speaking specifically to you. The psalmist goes on to say, you prepare a table before me. Think about it this way. When you're waiting for a table in a restaurant, your name is on the waiting list. Sometimes the hostess will give you a paper to hold. Then, when it's time to be seated, the pager, uh, I'm sorry, I said paper, pager. The hostess will give you a pager to hold, and when it's time to be seated, it'll vibrate or light up. In the meantime, you have every confidence they are preparing a table for you, and that if you're patient, when the pager vibrates, you get to eat, right? Now, I'm going to back up for a minute. It's the part where I said, therefore, you need to learn how to hear his voice and to know when he is speaking specifically to you. Ever had somebody come up to you at church or after church or anywhere, Bible study, you know, God told me this about you. Really? I didn't hear it. No, no, no. I said, he told me this, whatever this is, about you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I look him dead in the eye and I say, why didn't he tell me? They look a little bit flabbergasted. I'm serious about that thing about this thing. I grew up in church with my grandmother, Pentecostal Holiness, you all know the story. But at 37 years old, just a tender young man, my wife and I decided to return to our roots to turn our face back to the God of creation and away from the things of the world. Uh, in prayer, I said to God, as I cried out, I said, this time, no smoke and mirrors. The reason I strayed was because I felt like about half of what I was taught as a Christian growing up in that little church in Georgia was a bunch of hooey. I'm sorry, I did. My grandmother, who's 90 something now, who I have the most respect for. It's just unbelievable who she is and second grade education block. You've, you've all heard that story too. Uh, we grew up in a home, well in her home, not my mother's home, but in her home. Uh, no makeup, no earrings, no movie theaters, no dancing, and certainly, certainly there'd be no alcohol or tobacco. Well, about the time I entered the Navy, I came home on leave. My grandfather had passed away maybe a couple years prior. She had on a little bit of, I don't know what ladies call that stuff, make their cheeks red, rouge or blush or I don't know. Like, Granny, is that makeup? As she said, yeah, why son? Well, you always told me that 
you go to wear makeup or jewelry or go to the movie theater or dance. And she says, well, son, you know, things change. And I go, do they? Oh, yeah. And I say, well, okay. Things change. And uh, I don't want to say that led me into my new life of debauchery, but part of it did because I began to question, okay, well, if that was, you know, hooey, what else was hooey? I began to question a lot of things. And so, long story short, as I came back to God at 37, my wife and I, I said, now, now God, this time, it's got to be real. And I wasn't threatening God or, you know, making any... I was talking to myself more than anything else. I wanted it to be something that I truly could believe with every fiber of my being. No doubts, no misgivings, no Christianese. You know, and I'm talking about stuff like, uh, you know, it's Wednesday night, once a month was like testimony night, which I think is a good thing. <clears throat> As Sister Mary stands up and says, my electricity bill was due and I just didn't know how I was going to pay it. And I was down on my knees crying out to the Lord and there was a knock at the door and I went to the door and he handed me a check for $187.23. And the church would just erupt. People are doing backflips down the aisle. They didn't high five back then, but um, it was her social security check. It comes every month on the same day at roughly the same time, delivered by the same mailman. Now, is it a good thing that it came? Yes. Did the electricity bill get paid? Yes. Was it a miracle from God? <clears throat> well, I guess it depends on your perspective. But I grew up with a lot of those half-truths and half-miracles and, and stuff. You know? I, I had a... What do you call this guy? A, it was a family acquaintance. He had been uh, paralyzed since very young. Something happened, I don't know. But he had spent most of his life in a wheelchair. And he was a, he was a great guy. He became a school teacher. Uh, he lived a, you know, a fruitful life. And my aunt would go once a week and I don't know, do therapy with him or something. And I would go and hang out. They were kind of the rich, they were the only rich, they were the only people we knew that had more money than they could spend. They had a swimming pool and stuff. Uh, and he started coming to our church and he announced to the preacher, uh, I've come and I'm not leaving. And he put a blanket on the floor and he got out of his chair and got on the floor and he said, I'm not leaving. I'm not eating. I'm not drinking <clears throat> until God makes me walk again. Oh man, in the small town, I mean, electricity just rippled through the community. And <clears throat> it's almost like he was a, in, the, in, the, in the zoo or something. People that didn't even go to that church would come by and peep in and, you know, maybe sitting back as, as, as James, James Ashley, God bless him. He's been gone a number of years now sat there and cried and prayed and cried and prayed and cried and prayed. I think he lasted a week. I don't know. And finally, I don't want to say he gave up. I think he finally realized that God's plan, not his plan, was going to prevail in this situation. I've seen so many people over the years lose their faith in God because God didn't heal sister so-and-so 
or God allowed so-and-so to get in a car wreck. I mean, how, how much of what happens in this life do we have to take responsibility for? And how much can we blame on God? My, my dear accountant, Bunny Evelyn Budd, she was, she touched my life in ways that I, dude, it was your accountant. No, she was much, she was my Jewish grandmother, my Jewish mother, she, <clears throat> and I'm not Jewish, but uh, her take on God was so different than what I was brought up to believe. Her husband, through his ancestry, he was the guy that was allowed to stand up in the temple on Saturday or Sunday, whenever they go, and uh, and like read scripture. He had that lineage, which like made him a big dog in, in that temple. And uh, she never discounted what I said, and she actually, she kind of admired my faith, you know, with a smile. Kind of like, you know, well, that's cute, you know. She never said anything demeaning. She made too much money, uh, being my accountant. But she's one time she did share with me her faith, and it was that Dwayne, God doesn't get involved in our every in our day to day lives. He puts certain things in place, certain rules, certain principles, and I go, Are you saying we're we're on our own? She said, Well. That sounds kind of cold, but yeah, to a degree, I guess I am saying that. And I said, all your people believe that? She said, well, it's how I was raised. I goes, so that's what the children of Israel were grumbling about. And she's like, huh? Never mind. Uh, so I wanted something real. I tried God as a young man, growing up, smoking mirrors. Then I chased the things of the world, trying to find joy and happiness. And my cup, it, it never even got half full. So here I was, full circle, back at the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and my grandmother. Round two. And... Clear as day, he said, I've been waiting. And yes, I will help you. And I said, well, God, it's got to be real or I'm not going to stick around. I know me, okay? I'm going to stick around. He said, let's take it slow. One step at a time. And uh, before my head could spin around, we had gone from living this life I don't want to talk about. We had, an or we had built an orphanage. What? A home for battered women abused children? What do you know about that? You got some degree in social... No. A home for men recovering from alcohol and drugs. Well, where'd you get the degree? I don't have one. A mission in Mexico. I didn't know you spoke Spanish. <laughs> I don't. I can say bueno and taco and baño. And so God, in a short period of time, as I'm saying, I'm going to move slow, I'm going to be cautious, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic that you are real. And he said, okay, we can take it slow. And then, boom, 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 all this stuff popped up around me that I knew I had absolutely no way of doing on my own. I wasn't smart enough. I sure as heck didn't have the money for it. Uh, and without God, I wouldn't even have the inclination to do it. I don't believe in meddling in other people's lives. But uh, here I was. And he accomplished more in my life in about three years than I had accomplished in the whole, you know, 
37 years before. It's, it's just, he's real. You may not see him, you may not hear him, but if you don't hear him, it's because you're not listening. Or, you stopped listening a long time ago, and you got spiritual ear... I'm not talking about the voice of Charlton Heston. If you do something you know is wrong, and you don't feel guilty, uh-oh, you have offended the Holy Spirit. And you need to get on your knees, and you need to pray your way back to Jesus. Okay, end of sermon. You prepare a table before me. Think about it this way. When you're waiting in the restaurant, your name's on the list, the vibrator goes off, and bang, here's your table. All right? As you read God's Word and spend time with Him in prayer. Now, time in prayer. Well, I can't pray very long. Good. That means you'll be quiet most of the time that you're in prayer and you might actually hear something from God via the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, your lips don't have to be moving to be in prayer, to spend time with God. As you read God's Word and spend time with Him in prayer, something begins to vibrate and light up your spirit. That's God's pager leading and guiding you and preparing the circumstances just for you. Paul wrote, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 So, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> How many of your personal needs will God provide? I didn't say wants. I didn't even say hopes and dreams. I said, how many of your personal needs will God provide? The answer is all. Every one. So, the encouragement for today is stop worrying so much. You can't do nothing about it anyway, most of the time. Stop worrying so much and just put your trust in Him. Put your trust in the one who can fix the situation. He can plug the hole in the boat. He can right the ship. He can put fuel in your tank. Purpose in your heart. Ideas in your mind. The Alpha and the Omega. The architect of it all. The more you trust Him, the more you will know Him. Thanks for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Would you play? Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts, and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 
866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.